Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to uh, combine polynomials. And when we're combining polynomials, you know, the main important thing is really, one, understanding what are like terms and understand that we can only combine like terms. Now, I have more. When we're combining like terms, um, basically all we're doing is we're keeping the like term the same and we're just combining the coefficients um, or just adding and subtracting the coefficients. So, you know, the best way I like to a lot of times look at this is, you know, um, 3x plus 5x. A lot of times we think of this as, you know, when combining like terms, we say, like, well, 3 apples plus 5 apples. Well, you could say, well, well, then that is 8 apples. Okay? So the common variable or the common term remains the same, and we just go ahead and add and subtract our variables. In this case, you could say, well, I have four apples, you know, and I take away six apples, and then plus I have the number one there. So the number one's not going to affect it because it's not like terms. It doesn't have a variable factor y like these two terms do. So 4y minus 6y is a negative 2y, and then I write just plus one. All right, but now we get into a little bit more complicated when we actually have polynomials with multiple terms within them. How are we going to do that? And there's a couple different ways. One way is what we call the vertical method. And the other way is just kind of like rewriting them so they're um, together. So I'll, usually with addition, it's not that um, it's not necessary to use the vertical method. However, some students still like to use that. And what basically the vertical method is, is you take your terms and you write them one over each other. Just like if I was going to say 3x plus 5x, I could say 3x plus 5x, right? equals 8x. When you first learned addition, that was you know, one way that we w worked on how to do addition. So you can do that the same way. Um, so basically what I'd have is 3x squared. Now I don't have an x term, right? So you always want to go into descending order. You could either leave that space open, or you could write in plus 0x minus 2. This a lot of times confuses students, um, because 0 times x is just 0. So I'll just leave it blank here. However, I to avoid making mistakes, I like to write that in there. Because then I'm saying, well, what am I adding to x, right? Well, you're really not adding anything to x. That's why we left it as 0x. But again, it's OK. Aha, cucaracha. So when adding my vertical method, all I basically do is add my like terms. So 3x squared, oops, that's 4x squared, right? Yep. 3x squared plus 4x squared is 7x squared. X, I have nothing to combine it to, so it's just x. And negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. And there you go, I've combined my terms. The other way we do it is just kind of connect them and say that and go with that. And then the x has nothing to combine. So I can say 3x squared plus 4x squared is 7x squared plus x minus 1. Now, addition, you know, it's a little bit more common with that. But subtraction, I think, makes a um, can make it very, very difficult. So basically, when I'm doing subtraction, there's two different ways that I would recommend doing it. One is applying distributive property and then combining your like terms. So what we do is we just combine like, we just apply distributive property. So we have 4y cubed minus y. By applying distributive property, it's now a positive negative, negative opposite of y, and then minus 1. So when we apply the distributive property, we're, getting, we're distributing this negative, right? So plus y squared is really just, yeah, minus y, right? Then I just make sure I group my terms are together, and I can use just this method, right? Negative y minus y. Um, and that's negative y minus y is negative 2y. So my final term is 4y cubed minus 2y minus 1. OK, so there you go. Now, the next way, if you don't really like doing distributive property, the next way is to go back to our vertical method. And you can use the vertical, you can, you, you can distribute and then use the vertical method. Or you can also just say, you know what, I'm not going to, I'll do this over here. I'm not going to distribute at all. I'm just going to use the vertical method to subtract. And that's perfectly fine. But when you do that, it's very, 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 very important for you to make sure you say exactly out loud what you are doing. And even if you get stuck, write it off into the corner of what exactly you're doing. So 4y squared minus 3y. 4y squared, or I'm sorry, minus y squared. Oh, OK, that's just 3y squared. Negative 3y minus 8y, positive 8y. Negative 3y minus 8y. Do you see how I'm always going back to the minus? And then positive 8y. Well, that's going to be a negative 11. 
y. And then the reason why this gets tricky is because when you have a negative down here, 1 minus a negative 2. A lot of students will just do, oh, 1 minus 2 is negative 1. No, it's 1 minus a negative 2. So if I did 1 minus a negative 2, you can see that that's a double negative. So I have positive 3. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Um, put that back up there. Uh, that is a couple of different ways how we combine like terms. Again, when we're combining like terms, you take the like terms, add and subtract based on whatever your operation is for the coefficients. Um, and there's one where you can just you know, connect them or, or reduce, always take your, um, or take your subtraction problem and rewrite it as an addition problem. And then either just combine them or use our vertical method, um, which is preferred. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you combine your polynomials. Thanks. Hello. <laughs>